that the rear of the ship's rigging pub, near to the mouth of the River Mersey, next to a small electrical substation on wet muddy grass, lay the body. A woman who looked to be in her early twenties was lying on her front, her head turned to the right so that her face looked towards the rear of the pub building. Her arms were neatly resting by her sides, and her legs were together. Her white court shoes angled downwards so that the toes dug slightly into the ground. Her brown knee-length skirt was neatly smoothed down across the backs of her bare legs, and her pastel yellow cardigan also appeared undisturbed. Detective Chief Inspector Blackburn and Detective Sergeant Baker arrived on scene at 4.38am. The pathologist Dr Tobin was there to greet them in the gloom of the early morning. Hello, Tobin said, as he gingerly stepped towards the officers across the slippery sodden ground. He walked through the beams of the headlights of the Bedford CA van ambulance that had been parked and was obscuring the view of the crime scene from the main dock road. He looked tired, but full of concentration. Hi, Dr Tobin, DS Baker said. The pathologist brightened to see her. Emily was a well-liked officer around the city, and her upbeat mood was welcome as it offset that grim, cheerless demeanour of her boss. Hello, Doctor. What have you got for us? Blackburn asked as he watched the pathologist fighting against the muddy ground, trying to trip him up and only just holding his own. The doctor made it over to the officers eventually, and he smiled for the detective sergeant before he said what he had shuffled across the mud to say. It's a bit of a strange one, he began. The mud here is all muddy, as you can probably tell. He lifted his left shoe up off the floor so that they could see all the mud caked on it. Yet the body of the victim has no mud or dirt on her back whatsoever. She doesn't look like she struggled. Her handbag was found next to her and it's got her money and her house keys in it still. She wasn't beaten and she doesn't look to me like she's been raped, but I'll have to have a proper look at all of that later. The detective chief inspector listened as the doctor explained what they were dealing with. The victim couldn't have been here that long as it was raining up until three in the morning and her back's totally dry as well. But she's freezing, even colder than you might expect. The body seemed lonely in the lights of the ambulance, lonelier still that it seemed to be looking to the pub as if for some help. DCI Blackburn looked away from the victim and back to the pathologist. So you are saying that, what, she was somewhere even colder than out here before she died? Tobin shook his head. No, Inspector. You see, the thing is, he leaned into the officers and spoke very quietly. There are puncture wounds on her neck and on her breasts. Now, obviously, that suggests some sort of sexual motive, but there's something else. The officers just listened as, by now, the doctor was almost whispering. I'll need to confirm this obviously, but it looks as though somebody has drained the blood out of her. Blackburn looked back at the body and realised that the paleness of her skin wasn't just due to the lights of the ambulance washing the colour away. You mean before she was put to yet? He asked the doctor. Tobin nodded. In order to do that, you'd need special apparatus, and somebody would see you if you were doing that sort of thing here. Blackburn shook his head as he wondered where all of this might lead. Okay, thanks, Dr Tobin. Do me a favour, though, and keep that detail to yourself. We don't want the press making this any stranger than it already is. The pathologist nodded.